Hi everybody, uh, my name is Lance Porter and I'm a portrait painting teacher. In this little video lesson I want to show you how to draw using the grid system. Specifically what I want to teach you how to do is how to take an 8x10 photograph like this one and using the grid system enlarge it onto a blank piece of canvas to serve as the base drawing for a portrait like this one. So these dimensions that I just mentioned, 8 by 10 and 16 by 20 for the canvas, are important. Uh, 8 by 10, of course, is one of the most common sizes for a photograph. 16 by 20 is also one of the most common sizes for a canvas. You can find a 16 by 20 canvas anywhere. But they're important because 8 by 10 is exactly half the size of 16 by 20. 8 plus 8 is 16, 10 plus 10 is 20. So 8 by 10 is half of 16 by 20. And what that means is that we can draw a grid of one inch squares on the 8 by 10 photograph and draw a grid of two inch squares on our canvas and the proportions will be exactly right. It will allow us to enlarge our 8 by 10 photo or the image on it exactly twice size onto the canvas and everything will work out perfectly. So to do this you're going to need uh, some materials but not a lot. You're going to need an 8 by 10 photograph cropped exactly the way you want to see it on the canvas. You're going to need a, a 16 by 20 canvas like this one, but blank of course. And you're going to need some drawing tools. You're going to need a 12 inch ruler to draw your grid on the photograph. Any ruler will do. I like this one because it has a rubber strip on the back, keeps from slipping around while you're working with it, but honestly any old 12 inch ruler will work just fine. Again for drawing the grid on the photograph you're going to need a sharpie fine point permanent marker. Now keep in mind this is not the big fat sharpie, this is the fine point sharpie in black. And then for drawing your grid and drawing your image on the canvas you're going to need a yardstick because the 12 inch ruler just won't reach. And you're going to need um, a mechanical pencil. I want to encourage you to please do not use a regular yellow pencil or even a drawing pencil because especially when they start to get dull, they make a mark that's way too broad. We want to make the finest mark that we possibly can. So this is a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil, and that's what I recommend. I have also got some that are 0.7. They make a noticeably broader mark, and I don't want that. Uh, I want the, the finest mark that I can possibly get, so I like the 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil if you can find one. Uh, keep in mind, and I may mention this a couple of times, when we draw the grid and we draw our drawing on the canvas, we're going to be painting over that. And we don't want it to show through, so we want it to be as light as possible. If you use the Sharpie to grid up your canvas, you would never be able to cover up the checkerboard. It would always show through it. It would ruin your portrait. So not only do you want to use the finest, uh, thinnest lead mechanical pencil you can, but when you're drawing your grid and when you're drawing your drawing, in both cases, remember to draw lightly. The marks just have to be light enough to see. The lighter they are, the easier they are to cover with paint. Oil paint, as you probably know, is not perfectly opaque. Most different colors are either translucent or, in some case, a semi-transparent. So they will show through if you make your marks too dark. So, get started. I have uh, an example of that same photograph, 8 by 10 that I have gridded for you already. So this shows you exactly what it's going to look at like. And drawing this grid couldn't be easier. What you do is lay your marker across, or your ruler rather, across the top. Take your marker and make little hash marks at every one inch mark. Then bring your ruler down to the bottom and make the same hash marks at the bottom. Draw a line to connect the hash marks. Do the same at the side and at the bottom. One thing I want to caution you, because I've had students make this mistake, is don't make your hash marks across the top, then turn the photo over and measure from the other side to make your hash marks along the bottom. You'll find that these 8x10 photos are never exactly 8x10. So if you measure one set of hash marks from one side, one set of hash marks from the other side, when you connect them up, they'll be on a slight diagonal, just enough to drive you stark, raving, crazy. So don't do it. Make your hash marks across the top and then just bring your ruler down without rotating the photo and make them at the bottom and then you'll find that your lines are nice and parallel. Now something important that I think you'll notice on this, maybe you've seen it already, is that for the most part I've gridded in one inch squares, but in one critical area I've gone back in and I've subdivided those one inch squares into half inch squares. 
And this is easy to do. You just take your ruler, and on this, these four inches across and four inches down, right in this area, I've made another hash mark at the half inch mark. And same at the bottom, line them up. And so I've got half inch grid in this part of the face. Well, you might say, why? I've never heard of anybody doing that with the grid system. Well, I'm a portrait artist, and if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in portraiture too. And not every part of your portrait is equally important. The background, for example, is not as important as the eyes. So what I do is I grid in half-inch squares what's called the mask of the face. And that's everything from just above the eyebrows to just below the bottom lip. Because I want to draw those things absolutely perfectly. Don't get me wrong. I'm shooting for, for perfection, and that's one reason I use the grid system because I can get an absolutely perfect likeness sketched up on my canvas with the grid system. And so can you, by the way. Even if you don't think you can draw, you'll find the grid system makes it perfectly possible for you to do that perfectly. And I want that because I want to create a perfect likeness of my subject. And the first step is to have a drawing that's a perfect contour drawing of the subject. And I especially want it perfect in the mask of the face. The critical feature is the eyes, the nose, the mouth. I want them just right. So I give myself an extra aid by subdividing that into half inch squares. So, once again, I've worked ahead a little bit, and what I have here is a canvas that I have gridded up using the mechanical pencil and the yard stick exactly the same way I gridded up the 8x10 photograph. So you can see that where I've got the half inch squares on the photograph, I've got one inch squares on the canvas. And where I have one inch squares on the photograph, I have two inch squares on the canvas. And drawing a grid like this is very easy. Just make sure that you do your finer grid on the squares that absolutely correspond to the photo, of course. Now people say, all right, how does this grid help you? Well, the, the grid makes it possible to really draw a perfect drawing, even if you only draw stick figures when you're doing it freehand. And the way it works is very simple. Let's say that I want to start right here on the little girl's cheek line, the side of her face. Well, what I want to do is I want to find that exact same point. And, and where does it start in this square on my photo? And I look and it's three half inch squares down. Starts about two thirds of the way up that third half inch square. So I find my one inch squares here. I go one, two, three. And then I'm going to make myself the tiniest dot, two-thirds of the way up that one-inch square. And that, I know for a fact, is where this line, curving right through there, starts. Then I want to find out my finishing point. So again, I look at this and I say, well, how far is it from here to that mark? Is it halfway? I look at it real close and I go, no. I think it's about two-thirds of the way. So again, I'm going to go... Uh, I know I'm starting here, and that this line is going to cross out of this line two-thirds of the way. So I'm going to go right there and draw myself a little mark, just a tiny dot, just something big enough that I can see it. Then I'm going to take my pencil, and of course it's not exactly connecting the dots, because this line doesn't run straight from here to here. So it's not like playing connect the dots as a kid. I want to curve that line. So, but that's pretty easy drawing, because I know where I'm starting. I know for a fact where I'm going to end up, and all I have to do is mimic this curve, and that's not very hard to do. Keep in mind that we're using mechanical pencil in here, and you can absolutely erase the line if you feel you've got it wrong. Or you can leave the line that you feel was wrong. Maybe it wasn't full enough. Maybe you went too straight. You didn't get it bulging quite as much as she does. Well, leave your first line as a reference, and then draw it so it bulges a little more and looks more like the line that you're really trying to copy, and then erase the wrong line. And you'll find it's, this is not tedious. You know, if you do it by eye, if you eyeball where you start and finish, you can roll through one of these things. And, and besides, what's the hurry? What if it takes you an hour or two? You're getting a perfect base drawing to paint from, and that's very important. One other little tip, and this is a critical tip, is there's no law that says you can't take your ruler and measure exactly how far it is on, say, from here to here. And then double that measurement and measure the same thing on here and make your mark an actual measured mark on your grid. You can't go wrong if you do that. 
One thing I will strongly suggest is do not use the inch side of the root or use the metric side. And the reason is that let's say you measure on the little girl on the 8 by 10 and it's let's say it's 11 millimeters to where you want to make your mark. Well, you just double that on the canvas so it's 22 millimeters, easy as pie. But if you use the inch side and it's 5 eighths, well, what's 5 eighths times 2? I don't know. I can't do that in my head, but I can certainly do the millimeters in my head. So it's very quick and easy uh, to do it that way. So take your time, use the grid as your guide, and I'm here to tell you that you, no matter how little talent you think you have for drawing or for art or whatever, you can make a perfect contour drawing to go by when you start your painting. So let me show you what that looks like when you're done. It looks like this. And there's not much to it because I'm not trying to make a finished drawing here. I'm trying to make a contour line drawing that shows me where I need to paint. And again, as you can see, got my eyes, my nose, my mouth, the contour of the face, uh, the, the contour of her hairline, her little top, where her hair falls. All the critical things are mapped out on this, and that's, that's what is really more of a mapping out of where you're going to paint than actually trying to make a drawing that's going to be a pretty drawing that you can frame and hang from the wall. That's not the purpose of this. It's just to draw a lasso around areas of color. Now keep in mind, if you look here, I've got a line here. Well, there's no feature on her face like that, but what I'm doing there is I'm drawing this line roughly where the area of shadow turns into the area of light. So I want to know not just where the features are, you see some other contour lines around here, but I'm drawing there are shadows because I'm going to need to draw those shadows if I'm going to make a portrait like this when I'm finished up. So I hope this has been helpful to you. This is the first of a series of seven videos that I'm planning to post on YouTube uh, all about portraiture, how to draw a portrait, how to draw an eye, a nose, a mouth, how to mix paints, um, that kind of thing. So if you've got some value out of this, thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me on some of my other videos that are going to go up very shortly. Again, my name is Lance Porter. My website is learntopaintportraits.com and I hope someday you'll get a chance to participate in one of my two-day workshops and I'll get a chance to meet you in person. Thanks again.